What is up, Magic the Gathering players? Welcome to a new episode of Delver of Secrets, the sometimes weekly news show where we go over the biggest headlines in Magic the Gathering, focus a little bit on competitive, and then we wrap it all up uh, with a look at some of the big movers and shakers on the market. Usually we try to keep these below 10 minutes long so buckle up and get ready for the ride i want to shout out um face-to-face -face games and all the people that i met this last weekend at the face-to-face -to -face tour in vancouver it was an amazing time and i made so many new friends and i can't wait to see you all again so thank you so much for stopping by to say hello for all of the time and effort you put into getting to know me to watching my content and uh again i I'm thankful that I get to be a part of this community every time uh, I get a chance to reflect on that. Let's jump right in. This week, we got our first look at the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth Universes Beyond set. This is going to be the summer supplementary set. Um, they showed us a few cards like the One Ring, which comes with something called a burden counter. That's ominous. We got a look at a Frodo Sauron's Bane and a Samwise the Stout-Hearted. Uh, the fact that they made Samwise an uncommon is uh, kind of a slap in the face, but we'll move on. Uh, Gollum, Patient Plotter, and Mount Doom. And then earlier in the week, we got a look at Gandalf the Grey. You Cannot Pass, which is a nice little instant. Um, and then there's some specific things that they are focusing on Commander and Modern. Uh, one of the things is Reprieve, and then we've got a Tom Bombadil legendary creature, God Bard. I think that this set looks really cool, and uh, there's a lot of neat things that they're doing with these cards. I'm probably going to do a full set review uh, in the coming months, so I'm not going to go strictly into details about what's on these cards right now. But I think it's really neat what they're doing, especially what they're doing here. So there's this extra awesome foil elvish version of the One Ring. Um, there's four versions, technically. But this one in particular, there's only going to be one copy of it ever printed. It's going to be in Collector's Boosters, which can also be found in the gift bundle. But you can also just buy Collector's Boosters um, as singles. Uh, single uh, booster, sorry. And there's only ever going to be one. It is numbered. It is one of one serialized. The one ring to rule them all. Um, and it, I think that's a really fun and unique way to kind of entice people into buying collector's boosters. But it also like affects only the people that care about it. Uh, it's a neat and fun thing to add. And then they've got these reprints of the soul rings. So they were very clever in making sure that this was very flavorful. Um, so if you don't know the poem from Lord of the Rings, uh, there's a story that talks about how there was three rings for the elven lords, seven rings for the dwarven lords, and nine rings for humans. And so they've, they're doing reprints of Soul Ring with those numbers in mind for serialized versions um the elven ring is going to have 3000 for the non-foil and 300 for the foil dwarfs are going to get 7000 for the non-foil and 700 for the foil and then the humans are going to get 9000 for the non-foil and 900 for the foil and yeah this is it we got to look at the set symbols for the main set and then the commander products and there's a lot of dates to look out for. Obviously, Minneapolis is uh, in a couple of months, and that's going to be a big jump-off point for Lord of the Rings. We've also got a look at some of the cool artifacts and land treatments that they're doing. They're reprinting the Great Henge as the party tree, um, the bridge as the Khazad-dum bridge, and then the wasteland as the Valley of Gorgoroth. And those are really cool. And then here we've got the Trailblazer's Boots as the Lorian brooch. brooch. There's also going to be a nice starter kit, which is pretty cool. It comes with the um, 
Aragorn and Arwen card and the Sauron card. And then there's going to be a bundle, obviously. And then they gave us a look at some of the treatments. So these are the full art treatments. They kind of make a mosaic piece of art when you put them together. Uh, Pre-release kits are going to look like this. And then there's going to be some commander decks, which is really cool. Um, this includes like different versions of Sam and Frodo. And then there's a Radagast card here. So the four commander decks are Riders of Rohan. Uh, food and Fellowship, Elven Council, and the Hosts of Mordor, which is pretty cool. And then you've got the Collector Boosters, which has this amazing Frodo art on it. This is like some of the coolest art. Um, they've been using it as a tease for the last few months. Um, and then, yeah, full art planes, um, full art island, full art swamp. Full art mountains and full art forest. These are really gorgeous pieces of the Middle Earth map that you would find inside the like cover of some of the books. Obviously, everything that they're doing in this version of Lord of the Rings has to do with the novelization and not necessarily Peter Jackson's movies. And then we have some other special treatments. So these um, ring frames are going to be moments of doubt that these uh, characters have all gone through. And then we've got full art versions of Mount Doom and the Shire. And then full art versions of the One Ring, Aragorn and Arwen, Sauron. Uh, these, of course, we've seen. And then there's going to be these scenes range from two by two cards as seen above to up to six by three. That's pretty cool. An epic 18 cards to show an epic scene at that scale. Very cool. They're going to do jumpstart boosters, set boosters, draft boosters. Uh, the gift edition is going to have some of those collector's boosters in it. And then there's going to be a secret layer that also goes alongside it. That was long-winded. There's a lot to go over with the Lord of the Rings stuff. And it's going to start trickling out over the next couple of months. Um... But yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. If anyone is a fan of Lord of the Rings, the Tolkien uh, novels or the movies or whatever, uh, this is a cool set for you because they are they care a lot about this and it shows. Uh, we're going to hop on over to Competitive Corner. I love Competitive Magic. It's my main focus. And this weekend was a huge weekend. Like I mentioned, I was at the face-to-face -face regional championships this weekend. Um and I just wanted to go over, there was four full tournaments that took place over the weekend. And we'll go over uh, the the winners of each uh, in the face-to-face -face tournament that I was at. Um, Will, Will, uh, Niv, Will Niv uh, took home the championship in Vancouver playing a mono white mid-range deck. Apparently he uh, used Field of Ruin to destroy all of his opponent's basic lands or non-basic lands, his like legendary lands, and he had no basics in his um, library. So he was just killing all of his mana and stopping him from being able to cast anything. Congratulations to Will over in Europe, the Legacy European Tour. Uh, happened this weekend, and Michael Rohrbach won the second annual European Championship with a nice little take on the Grixis mid range. This one's got nice uh, trespassers in the main board, uh, at the addition of Grixis Command, and that's that's about it that's changed on this list. Uh, yeah, running the four Invoke Despairs. It's, it's a list that's been tweaked a lot, and congratulations to Michael on his win at the Legacy European Tour. The third championship was the uh, City Class Games Showdown. Um, Adriano Mello won with, again, a Grixis midrange deck and booked his invite to the Pro Tour and World Championship. And then lastly, Cheng Han Lin, who... Um, one with Azorius Soldiers. And that was pretty cool. 
that was at the uh, MT Championship in Taiwan. And they, yeah, played the Azorius Soldiers deck with a little bit of uh, tweaking here and there. But it looks like a really fun list to play. So um, congratulations to all four people that won regionals this weekend. And I'm excited to see you guys play on the Pro Tour and to see you play at the World Championships. All of the winners got invites directly to the World Championships. Um, the next rotation of regionals is coming up in June, so I'm very excited for that. We're going to be playing a lot of qualifiers. As always, let's wrap up the show. Um, I say as always, but I keep forgetting to do this. So the new tradition, we will wrap up the show with a quick look at the Dragon Shield winners and losers of the week. Uh, right now, we've got Jace's Sanctum is up 26, 262%. Gorio's Vengeance is up 205%, up to $15. Lure is up 200%, up to almost $4. Uh, we've got Resurrection up almost 200%, just above 5 bucks. And then we've got Ovika Enigma Goliath is up almost 200% 200 to roughly 2 bucks. Our biggest losers are Lyra Dawnbringer, down 85%. Thought Not Seer is down 53%. Castle Ardenvale is down 51%. Uh, this fancy championship deck edition of Lanawar Elves, or is it all Lanawar Elves, are down 41%. And then Sengir Vampire has dropped 42%. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for checking in, watching this video. A lot of the people that are watching these and commenting, I'm, I'm having so much fun interacting with everybody. But there's still a lot of people that are watching them that aren't subscribed yet, and we're trying to boost that subscription number. So if you're liking this content or you want to see more or you want to just say, hey, definitely feel free to do so. But we would really appreciate it if you could hit that subscription button to help us get our numbers up. We're just looking to get access to a little bit more tools on the back end here uh, with YouTube. And again, as always, follow me on Twitter at YFawcett or on Instagram at ERPMTG or on Twitch, which is just at ERP. Um, and I will see you guys very, very soon. Again, thank you so much. Uh, may all of your opening hands be keeps and may all of your opponents mulligan. I hope you see some cute puppies today. I appreciate you and I will see you soon.